Welcome to the 160th episode of News Dump, where we run through the hottest topics in Lewis County news scene and discuss. It is Thursday, October 12th. I'm local man Aaron Vantile, joined by Chronicle Editor-in-Chief Eric Schwartz, Assistant Editor Isabel Vanderstoop, and Photo Editor Jared Wenzelberger. We're joined in spirit by sponsors Summit Funding and The Roof Doctor. Does anybody have any preambles or anything they'd like to share? This fine, lovely, nice and warm afternoon. I got nothing. How's soccer going? Are you done yet? No, I was, the boy is done playing soccer as of yesterday. They won. I know everybody Woo! was wondering that. Woo! And then ah. uh, the girl has a tournament in Napa Vine at the end of the month. Great. The what what fun you'll have. to be over, but it's not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else big going on? It's been kind of a busy, newsy day, but we'll have some coverage of the chamber debates in the next paper probably, and a couple other things are coming out. So we've been working a lot, all of us. The big news we just put on Cronline is not good, positive, news dumpy kind of news, but um, Emily Fitzgerald has written, former Toledo Middle School teacher accused of inappropriately touching at least nine students. Oh, that's so not great. You can read all about that. Also, the, the final note in her story is that he's still a teacher um, in Oregon now. So, oh. So he's been at multiple schools in Washington. But anyways, the allegations are all laid out there. And yeah. All right. Well. You guys want to get into news? Let's. You want to do your heavy side now, Schwartz, and just... I'm just going to let you go, man. I've seen these notes here. It's a tale of two cities in length, and yeah, just do it. Uh, from, from This happened Tuesday, and the story came out yesterday, I believe. Uh, crowd debates after commissioner proposes a rating system for Timberland Library. Stop shaking your head. Well, well it came out on, came Tuesday, out on Tuesday, Tuesday, you know? Yeah. You're attacking our timeliness there. It happened Tuesday and was on Cronline on Tuesday. Okay, well, all right. Correct the record. Great. Facts matter, Aaron. <laughs> I like. I very much enjoyed the story. I thought Mitchell did a lovely job with it. He did. Uh, Sean Swope is once again begging you to pay attention to him. After a dress rehearsal on Facebook Live and at church on Sunday, Swope debuted his presentation titled, The Library is Full of Pornography and Only I Can Save Your Children. Tuesday's commissioner's meeting. He proposed his book rating system again, but pared it down quite a bit. Fellow commissioner Lindsey Pollock was surprised by the early morning change. Do we know what that was about at all? Has there been any insight? It's in the story. I mean, he explains himself. He did additional research into existing policy and thought it would be very difficult to do the original plan, but it's in there if you're legitimately interested. And so he pared it down, and that was given to the fellow commissioners on the morning of the hearing. I believe. People from all over attended the meeting to either dunk on Swope or agree that pornography is the devil. One lady even brought her own, quote, pornography from home and shared with the class to show how bad it is. Um, There's a few problems with this presentation, which I'm sure some of you watched on Facebook Live. Maybe some of you were in attendance and are appalled at my... You can still watch it on... Sarcastic treatment of this topic. Yeah, it's still out there. Uh, The first problem with this presentation, not enough porno. If you promise me there's porn in the kids section of your local library, you'd better deliver. All Swope found on what were apparently multiple hunts for pornography. He should have gone to the woods. Sorry to step on your back. It wasn't just pornography. He's also looking for inappropriate stuff. Just to sprinkle yes. a little. But he was in dropping the, the P word yeah, pretty hard. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, the only thing he shared with the class that was actually in the kids section was a 30 year old book about puberty with crude drawings. The book is called It's Perfectly Normal, and it also says right on the cover that it's for kids 10 and up. So, like, mission accomplished? That kind of, I don't know. Is that the type of book, because I haven't actually looked up the book. I, I know what he's talking about. Is that the type you'd give a kid when he's, you know, around puberty age? It's the kind of thing that if you missed sex ed day in middle school, <clears throat> your parents might give you this and be like, sorry, you didn't get your free stick of deodorant. I okay. think there's a little bit more um, like inclusivity than the sex ed I had when I was a kid, though. I, let me find the actual... Well, this book probably predates your sex ed experience, though. But I, it still has more... <laughs> okay. Go on, though. Go on, Aaron, while she's doing that. Um, and so, like, that's it. His concern was this book being on shelves and a child reading it, becoming addicted to pornography, and perhaps becoming Ted Bundy, which is a real actual point he brought up, Ted Bundy. Other than being from Washington at some point, I don't see any, like, crossovers here. Um, I think he had watched a documentary the, the evening before, so it was fresh on the mind. Do you think he watched the, uh, the Zac Efron I was wondering version? that. I was wondering that. Uh, another problem, not one instance of this imagined problem occurring. All that prep work 
and a book that's been on the shelf since Bill Clinton's first term, and you can't find one person whose nine-year-old child pulled this book off the shelf, liked the cover, opened it up, got to the chapter on having genitals, and shouted, I am now sexually active, mother! Uh, it's another a, problem. It's a performance today, man. It, it really is. <laughs> the books in that, the pictures in that book aren't pornography. It's it's like a textbook. It's not like Kyle Rasmussen got up and spoke during the hearing about how pornography is material, quote, containing the explicit description or display of sexual organs or activity intended to stimulate erotic feelings. If you are getting that impression from a book with crude drawings meant to instruct children on what's going to happen during puberty. Of, ch- of children. Of children. Still. like b- No, yeah, that's like that's more of my weird. point. That's kind of weird. Yeah, that's, that's more of my point. I am not like, I'm not trying to take a side on this, but like referring just to my own childhood, like, yeah, like I just looked at that book and it does appear to be more like inclusive and talk more about like gender identity and stuff than some of the books that I was presented with when I was growing up. But I had, and almost every girl in my generation had the American Girl, The Care and Keeping of You book. And it had like pictures of boobs and what is this going to look like? Like drawings of them. And, oh, you're going to have hair in your armpits. Like stuff that, you know, is a hard, weird thing to have in a conversation with your kid. But if they can kind of like be prepared and understand like the visuals of, they might not be as like mortified by the already humiliating experience of puberty. That's all like I wanted to say on this is just there's, there is some value to those things. And I feel like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Those are all very valid points. Um, But we'll get past the point where Sean Swope's pornography presentation was missing pornography. Say this rating system did happen. What what happens? Unsupervised kids wouldn't be able to check out books? It's all in the story. They can still look at whatever they find on shelves, though, correct? Uh, it's all in the story, bro. I, well, I I'm mean, not letting the, you off the hook you, for not reading read the source the material. I did read the story. <laughs> Uh, like, are they going to move the books to a different section? Like, again, I, none of that's really established. That's what he's, he's cut it down to those four bullet points, I think three or four bullet points. So there's not really anything to argue against other than I'm anti the the rating system. I've also seen it couched online as a ban. It's not a ban. It's not a ban. Um, you can still disagree with it. Sure. You can still disagree with it. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Mitchell uh, Roland, he's our newest reporter, and I thought he did a fantastic job of sharing the perspectives of everyone that spoke at the meeting, whether mm-hmm. they were members of the public or uh, the commissioners themselves. I thought he did a remarkable job. We have it on video. Um, so I don't want to gum any of that up with like my own opinion, but um, I think like there's a reason you had the people there who were advocating for the ban. They were uncomfortable with it. Um, you can ask a separate question whether it got blown up out of proportion like on you know both sides that they're calling for a book ban and there's porn in the library are on the far opposite spectrums yes um and then i'm just i just want to point that out yeah i do think if you were just to offer someone the policy and not say a word about it and just say like hey this is something that my local government is considering and you didn't have any of the other context you would be like okay you know what i mean like it's not super controversial one way or the other. So I agree with you there. And I think it's probably important to point that out and that like our hyper politicized place and time that we're in right now kind of like makes every issue like that. And one argument was that like books already have ratings on different websites that you can go see. Oh yeah. But one of the takes that I essentially heard was those aren't good enough. So that's kind of where we're at, it looks like. And there's maybe if you had framed it within the uh, like accessibility, like do you want that book in the little kids section? Because in that library, that is where the little kids look for books, where I leave my kids to look for books. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe you talk to the library manager and just say, I, hey, I think this should be maybe in the health section for a parent to pull. And like it's still there and it, that nothing prevents a child from grabbing it if they want to, I guess. Yeah. Um, but we're not talking about, the, I mean, this... I have to question how practical a book rating system would be like when you, like you were saying, actually start to think, okay, how would that play out? Um, And it, it seems just from my point of view to be a bit impractical, just logistics wise, if you take out everything else. Um, So I don't know. Before this was brought, sorry, Aaron, uh, but I was just going to say before this was brought up, um, the Chehalis Timberland library page on Facebook actually posted a list of 
different resources that parents and kids can use to like find their next book. And some of them are like based on appropriateness and some of them can be content filters. And so there are already a lot of resources that can aid people with that. And of course, that's what library staff are for. Like they want to help you find an appropriate book that you want to have. But what if you go to the library and the staff slips pornography into your kid's pocket? Okay. <laughs> you, want to, you want to keep it on that end of the I, spectrum? This, no, not really. It's, <laughs> this whole thing is so ridiculous and such a massive waste of time. We, I mean, no one's really even said here. It's in the story, but L Lewis County doesn't have any power here. The yeah. commissioners don't have any power here. They have two trustees that represent us, uh, or represent the county, I should say, on the board. Um, but, I mean, wh how many counties is it involved? Five? Five, Five counties, Five. yeah. Um, so it, it, if you, to me, reading it, it's less of a policy and more of like a suggestion. Like, Lewis County Commissioner makes suggestion on books. Like, yeah, I mean, he's already made it, and he just got dunked on by the library. <laughs> like, why I, are you trying this again? I'm not saying he got dunked on, but I just, I don't know. Does it have more power than Sean Swope writing to the library and saying we should do a rating system, which I'm Maybe sure he's Maybe if done. he went to the library board they as did. a reasonable All parent. three... All three commissioners did yeah. that and signed it a while ago. That's right. The Seattle yeah. Times ran that story, which is like kind of why it's still in my mind. But all three of the commissioners initially said that they were for it, and it was pretty much the exact same thing that he proposed mm. on Tuesday. Um, I guess what I keep coming back to is that if your kid is in the library and you find him or her pulling a puberty book off the shelf, which seems like the ultimate absolute doomsday scenario that prompts all this, you can always just say, oh, maybe when you're older, and then put it back. And then, like, that's it. If you make a big that's stink simple, and run up to the counter. That's simple to you, but, like, I don't know. I, as always, and it's not just to act as a counterweight, like, I don't want to insult anyone. And, like, Swope's one thing. He's a public official. You go you go at him all the time. That's, that's fine. Uh, but there were well-meaning people there that this is their opinion, so I don't want to turn it into, like, a mock fest of them. And I don't think, like I said, one person there was calling for a book ban. Um, it could be said that they got worked up by this particular situation and it was, you know, not warranted to have even a large public discussion on it. I feel but, like they were kind of sold a false bill of goods by our dear commissioner who claimed there was pornography in the library and got the people riled up to say, we don't want porn in the library. And then he could not find any porn in the library. Yeah. I mean, you keep calling it porn, but I don't think he's called it porn on all references. And I'm not, this is just to try to add some rails to this discussion. Um, I think Gender Queer was the other book that he was concerned about, which did have a, a scene in it that I showed to you, and I believe you blushed a bit. So, I, like, yes, it's, I mean, it's I, a, I can't believe it was only the third time we've looked like at male-on-male -male <laughs> pornography together. I, I know. <laughs> I just, I'm just saying, though, that... <laughs> I think the <laughs> argument the argument was that uh, those types of images, those types of ideas will lead a child to pornography. But pornography Absolutely. is not what he was that book trying is to also out. also not in the kids section. No, but I'm just you just keep saying pornography in the library like Well, I mean, he those said pornography are the a lot. I understand he said it, but are you not capable of understanding that he's yeah, talking about pornography too in the library? Lord. And for your argument it's about that, impossible. I mean, some, you're, yeah, you're splitting hairs impossible. all of you. I Remember the thing that Aaron said when we first talked about this, like when they sent that letter that we were just referring to the, I think the end conclusion we all came to is the more you restrict what your kid can look at while they're growing up, the more they're going to have experimentation in college or try to go look at stuff or whatever. And or start killing single women up and down the <laughs> I five corridor, apparently. I just yeah. want to know what all the I children just, think with the smartphones as we're arguing about what's in the library. Yeah, for real. I, well, we'll I, get to the internet discussion. <laughs> okay. Well, it's just, I mean... Oh, this is a long topic. Ultimately, I th and I think this is where we landed the last time. This is where I did, I think. It's like, you, you cannot, as a public official or as a community critic, like, decide what kids will go look at and whatever. You just have to be a diligent parent. And that is the only thing that will like get your kid to read things that you want them to and not want them to or whatever. Like yeah. they'll find it. <laughs> Who was your favorite children's author is at the library? Old doll. Matt Christopher for me. Um, God, when I was a kid, I read a lot of Beverly Cleary. Yeah. Um, Good for you. And then I got into like Girl Power, Terry Brooks, and well, I went through all the Goosebumps books and shit. Yeah, I, did I was a big Goosebumps. Hardy Boys kid. Really? Yeah, I read some Hardy Boys. Uh, Boxcar Lewis. Children. Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. Heard of them? Wasn't my thing. No. Yeah. Did you guys read the? No, you probably didn't. 
the Magic Treehouse books? Uh, uh. Yeah, Magic Treehouse is it's old. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know. I watched, I, I watched the show as a kid. I don't remember reading the books. Oh, I didn't know there was a yeah. show. That's fun. Yeah, the books were great. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Like, you can always just tell your kids, maybe when you're older, unless your child is in their 40s, in which case you can say, Commissioner, just check out the book if you're that worried about what's happening to your body. Oh, um, God. Other oh, notes. <laughs> Swoop also makes a big stink about Do we about have the... to keep going on this one, though? Okay. I want to get to the, right. the internet discussion because it was hilarious. He was comparing the guardrails the library has on the internet to their lack of a rating system, which is a false equivalency. Am I using that right? I don't know. Like, you need guardrails on the internet because it's the internet. You could just Google boobs and boobs will show up. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Um, and then Lindsay Pollock made a joke about how, well, you can't find Hustler on the library shelves. And Swope said, this is no time to be comical, which was his wildest reach of the day. It was indeed the time to be comical. I the always whole thing was. enjoy seeing the word comical used outside of relation to the Chronicle. And did you capitalize it? <laughs> the same thing. Yeah, I did too. I was like, oh, what a relief. <laughs> All right. Are you guys ready to wrap this part up? Yeah. Okay. To be clear. The commissioner is wasting county staff's time and our tax dollars on trying to bully an organization he doesn't oversee into adopting a solution that won't work for a problem that doesn't exist. That's it. That's all I got. Next I, I will item. say, oh. we, we will get... No, 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 no. I don't have an opinion. I'm not sharing any opinion. Um, I'm, NPR was there, and we've yet to see what they produce out of it. But that speaks to the, the nature of the moment, though, that yeah. this did draw NPR. It's not like oh, a commissioner just made a run-of-the-mill suggestion. Like it, it drew in press from outside of Lewis County, and that does not happen too much in the commissioner's uh, office. Uh, yeah, I've never seen an NPR reporter in the commissioner's hearing room in the time that I've been a reporter. Mm. Following up on our discussion about tourism last week, this is the wrong kind of tourism. Oh, okay. Oh, from the NPR, you yes, media you coming in. They have lots of money. <laughs> media coming in to just like God, look at what they're doing here. Yeah, the last know, one was the mask man, the mask mm-hmm. mandate ban. Yeah. As Drew Mickelson was here, but Drew would also come if there was probably something like yeah, he's, cool he's good, and yeah. nice. Like I do agree that there is a tendency to just be like, well, what are those hicks down in Lewis County doing? Let's go show it off. Like yeah, that, which well, I see from that, TV news a lot. Yeah. And Drew Drew Mickelson is not necessarily not one of them. I wouldn't lump category. him in that. I, yeah, I agree. I wouldn't put him in that category. I think that he is like. He has a pretty nuanced and good way of covering the area. All right. Next item. Centralia Ooh. Police Chief demonstrates mobile surveillance trailer. This is kind of fun. Yeah. No, I like this story. Uh, this is to determine crime in the park or elsewhere. It's about the size of a small refrigerator and you drag it behind a car, I guess. Kind of like if you're like... That's how you move it and you would park it somewhere. Yeah. Like if you're moving... It's like if you're like dragging a barbecue around, you know? Kind of. Like sure. It's kind of like that. A little smaller. I do um, feel like it's very conspicuous. <laughs> yeah, it kind of stands out. It's got the bright blue, bluish purple. Maybe I'm colorblind, but lights on the top to indicate that it is active. Yeah. Um, anyway, if a crime is committed directly within the camera's view, police can save the video or picture as evidence. But Police Chief Stacy Denham said because of the deterrent factor, most data is simply left on the hard drives until it is overwritten. Uh, it can take pictures and do thermal imaging and speak recorded phrases. Um, this is the lamest possible version of RoboCop we could have imagined. <laughs> well, the, the police officers can also access it through an app on their phone at any moment, and they can speak through it if I read it correctly. It definitely reminds me of which is <laughs> something <laughs> off of Demolition Man. Yeah, like, just imagine, you're, I don't know, you're Drop out. the weapon now. What are you going to do, machine? Yeah, yeah, walking home from the bar and you start to pee in the park or whatever, and the, the old police trailer lights up and it's like, stop peeing there. And you're like, no, <laughs> like, we have your picture. And you're like, get a good look. Um, anyway, <laughs> Denham said at the council meeting, say it's in a park. He can say the park is closed, leave immediately, or you can be arrested for trespassing. Uh, the box is a he. Okay, arrest me. <laughs> We're just making up pronouns now. I'm pretty sure the county banned that a few weeks ago, but this is basically Not an accurate. oversized. Yeah. They tried. An oversized $35,000 trail cam that can talk. I don't think it's a bad idea, but 
I don't know, kind of big brothery, do you guys think? I think it's a good way. It is, I'll sh- I can share an opinion on this. I live in Centralia. It, yeah, it's a good way to park you can all the time. Park that in front of a, a hot spot. So they're starting with George Washington Park. People, residents have complained that there's illegal activity going on there, not just homelessness, but drug use, that kind of thing. I'm sure if you post this right there, then that is going to have some sort of effect. I don't think it stops that activity. It maybe just increases the number of people going around the building to do whatever they were going to do. But <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Just people standing behind the thing being on it? No, no, you can't sneak up on this thing. <laughs> oh, oh, really? <laughs> no, read the, read the story. It's like got all angles. Like it's impossible to it's impossible to approach without getting getting uh, on the video. I feel so. like it's definitely a deterrent. I've seen these like in parking lots up north to prevent like vehicle prowls. So I'm what? sure it could be used for something. It's going to be very obvious. Though. It's going to be mo- you, moved around though. It's not going to hear me. Long. Hear me out. What do you do if? You pull it out of your driveway in the morning and that motherfucker's parked across the street. <laughs> I'd have questions. Uh, I would really would have questions. And there will be folks, right, rightfully so, maybe who are concerned with privacy on it. Um, yeah. But I think the citizens have been very vocal in asking for something to be done about the parks and keeping the parks safe. And I think they're trying to pull every lever they can. There was this, there was the was they empowered the police chief to ban people from the park for life or ban people <laughs> well, from yeah. the park. Well, uh, that kid knocked his ice cream cone over. Yeah, but they've done stuff. So, And I don't I exactly sure how much this one fight. costs. It was $35,000 is what was allocated for it. But Yeah, uh, and we talked. To, we mentioned this a few weeks ago mm-hmm. when it was like a budget item. We didn't know what it was. I, exactly, yeah. And I'm glad we've gotten to see it. Sorry. I try to tamper my like concerns about surveillance society with my... like want for public access and the ability to record and take photos in public. I think as long as the footage and information is easily accessible to the public, then it is fine with me. But I do see that there's probably a double standard when it comes to like paying for body camera records and all sorts of other things than like it would be if you were just trying to request like a photo that someone got of you. I don't know. There's like, there's, I have concerns about it, but I also like don't want that to be something that like stops at all. Just knowing that there's people that are concerned is helpful though. I mean, to know that there's, you want to have that. You don't want to just like every time there's a new camera, the entire community is cheering. Like, uh, I think it's good to have some resistance. Yeah. Yeah. I want to pee in private. (laughs) Also like, why not just put like a camera up? Pointer at the park, if that's the issue. Like, I, just like this. last time, I just wish that this was like there was a view that the public could log into where yeah. we could watch it that's at what, all times. Yeah. Just that's live stream it. Live stream the virtual park. rail fan can. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Parks. And you move it every day, announce where it's at that day to get the people excited. Yeah, that's yeah. what I kind of think. <laughs> too. What if I they actually, didn't move it and they just like showed up in your house? I feel like, like hey. the salute, the best solutions that I hear to more surveillance is actually making them even more public. Yeah. Um, yeah, have the public monitor them. Have the public <laughs> control Deputize those chats. the public. Well, I mean, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> that reminds me when, the, when they were building the splash pad just a couple of blocks from here and someone suggested, sur- like, cameras, for, like, that the community, like, could log into. And they were, <gasps> oh, like, my gosh, no. It was discussed for a brief moment, if I r- recall correctly. Yeah, I'm I sorry know. if I don't, but I remember cool. that being a thing. Um, anyway, all this being said, uh, I appreciate Denim's willingness to try something new and adapt as a local law enforcement agency. And while I'm not 100% certain I agree with this, right, let's see how this plays out. Maybe it's going to be funny. Uh, next item. Jamie Herrera Butler announces bid for state commissioner of public lands. She announced this here in your office, correct? She did tell us about it and then the next day announced it. Well, that's kind of rude. What day was that? She did stop in for a visit, but uh, I was Monday. on deadline at the time. I didn't get to talk to her much, but it was nice to see her in the office, though. Yeah, it was Monday. Yeah, yeah it was Monday because you messaged me, and I was like, oh, well, I won't repeat what I said. Um, Thank you. The- <laughs> I mean, I figured she was going to tell us that she was running for office when I saw her in the Chronicle. Either her hand was forced or it was like a tip-off type situation, but the Seattle Times had the story later yeah. in that day, yeah. and yeah. then um, you wrote a version for us as well. Uh, the former congresswoman and anti sea lion champion is running for Hillary Franz's seat because Franz is running for governor. She wants to focus on wildfighters, sustainable forestry, and collaboration between tribes, conservation groups, landowners, and reps from timber and sports industries in a way that reaches across partisan lines, something her party scrutinized her for when she joined just nine other House Republicans when voting to impeach Donald Trump after the January 6th attack on the Capitol. 
Who would win a battle of wits between Franz and Herrera Butler? What about a logging competition? I have no idea. I don't like to judge women that way. <laughs> sure. <laughs> they're both judge in, them purely on looks. They, they're both extremely like. <laughs> they're both That's like pleasant joke. and helpful though, yeah. and like their interactions with the Chronicle. Yeah. So, uh, how many other candidates are there again? Uh, there are six, and one is a Republican. Um, they all are very different from the last. One of them is like a Macaw tribal member. One of them, I think, has held public office in the state before of some kind. You know, Dave up the Grove. Who is he? I don't know. Oh, I thought I know. You know, I've, I've heard of him and okay. read about him. He's the front runner. It sounds like. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, there's a handful of others. I, I just feel like there's something that I can't quite describe about Hillary Franz, Franz and Jamie Herrera Butler that kind of has a similar vibe, like in different ways, but they're both like pretty like spark plug type of bright women who like you just said are very like easy to communicate with. I don't know. There's something, something about that. Mm -hmm. Manic pixie elected dream girl. Is that what you're (laughs) getting at? It's like, it's like professional elected woman. No, go on. Go, no, I want to <laughs> Were you going to say professional this. elected woman, Barbie? Is that what you were going to say? No, I was going to say that. Like, <laughs> I was just trying to, I was trying to come up with words that are kind of the opposite of Vanic Pixie Dream Girl. Like, they're both very normal. And they're both very, like, you know. Well, that's a shot across everyone else's bow. I feel like you're, you describing, you're describing the cool girl from the film Gone Girl. And I have news about how that movie turns out. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, Jamie Herrera Butler was here. She hung out with you guys. Uh, next item, saddened. Morton's beloved headless horseman will ride no more. Do you want to take this one, Isabel? Yeah. Um, in 2021, Jared and I did a feature on this woman, Bobby Dalton, and her horse. Um, but we were recently informed that Tallulah Jane, the beloved horse from of this Morton resident, um, and had had been put down. I guess I'm like talking around it in a weird way. Um, They would ride into Morton every Halloween as the Headless Horseman together in this, like, very elaborate costume. Um, So this is from the story. For nearly a decade, Dalton and Tallulah Jane have delivered tricks and treats to residents of the East Lewis County town on Halloween by dressing up as the Headless Horseman and clomping down Main Avenue to pass out candy. This year, the ghostly equine will instead rest in peace, which... I, I wrote this up because it's just like people will probably be like, where are they? Because it's a 20 or yeah, like t- I think maybe a decade long tradition. Um, and then also I wanted to point out that I looked back at the 2021 story after and realized that I had written the term ghostly equestrian in mm. that one. So my question to you guys was, is Am I redundant or like a ain't broke, don't fix it kind of writer? Because I can't decide. No, repeat yourself. I used to do that all the time. Uh, Gordon Adlin, one of our greatest columnists we've had since I've been here anyways, the late Gordon Adlin, he used to he used to uh, uh, steal his own work quite often, especially if it was a great turn of phrase. He'd mm-hmm. just kind of replace some nouns if it called for it. And I was just like, you know what? You wrote that, and that was very, very clever, so... Run it, run it again. <laughs> yeah, you run can it plagiarize back. yourself. Why not? Yeah. Anyways, just a little sad story, but also um, just wanted to give a little shout out to this volunteer, spooky, fun tradition. The number of readers on that online told me that that was a, a very big deal, and that for one, and then for two, that it was the first time that they had heard about it. So I'm sure it's something people in Morton look forward to, or at least a lot of people in Morton look forward to, and yeah. seem, some seem to be learning about it for the first time. So I think it was an apt story. As someone who's covered Halloween in Morton, it was a staple, and people came out to see that horse and were so overjoyed every time that they saw her and that horse dressed up in costume. Uh, yeah, I had that in Hero of the Week, actually, but I have pulled it. But I read that and found it to be very good. I was sad for that poor lady. Me too. Um, I also have, I'm working on a story that has 
um, a lot of different lawmakers having statements about the last week in Israel and Palestine. I was going to try to loop this into a roof doctor thing, but I can't. That's like not. Probably a good call. <laughs> I mean, I did actually want to say that on the podcast, but then I just couldn't figure out how to segue. So, Well, I'm glad you put a lid on it. And you can put out a lid on it, too, by <laughs> calling the roof doctor. That wasn't bad. It's was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, you can give them a call at 360-736-0246. The roof doctor has been a family-owned roofing company since 1959. Serving Lewis County and beyond. And most importantly, if you give them a call and they show up, they will give you a free estimate of what it will cost to either repair or replace your roof. Visit theroofdoctor.com to learn more or just call them up. What the hell? 360-736-0246. And with that, I hate to no, hear no, you. No, 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 no. With the apologies to the person this happened to, I thought of the roof doctor when I was reading Sirens, and I noted that this is not the banger of the week, so we're fine. But okay. in Sirens yesterday, one of the items was a guy jumped out of his car and kicked over a ladder while somebody was working on a roof <laughs> like, and oh, then no. jumped back in his car and took <laughs> off. And I was just like, <laughs> oh I pray gosh. that wasn't the roof doctor. Like, they would figure out how to deal with it. But That's so needlessly it, mean. Yeah, I wanted to get that in. <laughs> What a it's our, jerk. Our, our local bang. Some people just want to watch the world burn. Yeah. I know that was the Joker, but still. Okay. <laughs> and with that, we're going to take a quick break. Hi, this is Jeff and Julie from Fairway Lanes. Jeff and I met Jacek of Summit Funding at our bowling center. So when we fell in love with this community and it was time to relocate, we knew we would be calling Summit Funding. They understand that everyone has a unique situation when buying a home. He had already helped two of our employees get into their own homes. The Summit Funding team exceeded our expectations. It was a seamless experience with great communication from his whole team. Thank you to Summit Funding for making our buying experience special and memorable. All right, we're back, and it's time for segments. We're, uh, do you want to go through Tales from the Takes page, or are we skipping it? We can skip it. No, we no, have we one have quick couple. note. Or Yeah, Isabel, you go ahead. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to mention the letter from the sister, but we can do that. No, 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 not a letter. That was something oh. different entirely. That oh. was just off-camera, off-mic discussion. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Maybe not off-camera. I don't well, know where it's parked at right now. All I said was sister. Right <laughs> we didn't go into the details of it. It's fine. Um, yeah, so Maureen Harkham is the president of the Lewis County Farm Bureau, and she proposed earlier this summer to me that she might be interested in doing like a column series on agriculture in the area and just like issues that local farmers are facing as the like consolidation of larger farms increases and prices are going up and yada, yada. And um, she just was like really passionate about it. And she came to the Chronicle and talked to me about it. And um, I had been kind of like slacking on my end to get this like into Eric and everything, but we um, ran her first column and we're hoping to see more afterwards. And it is titled Focus on Agriculture. America needs to get back to knowing and supporting its farmers. And I thought the best part of it was uh, perhaps you have seen the signs reading no farmers, no food, which has K-N-O-W. And she said, many of us read it two ways, literally and phonetically as no farmers, no food. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's good. A lot of classic, <laughs> good, like, remember where your food comes from messages, so. Uh, you know what? You know what she should have called it. Tractor takes. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, did you have a better idea? <clears throat> I didn't think no, so. No, focus on agriculture. Is that what she called it? I think that was the, what we went with for the first one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure if she comes up with something better than tractor takes, we'll run it in farms way. <laughs> oh, that's kind of kind of funny. I like that one. Uh, Sirens banger of the week. Go ahead, Schwartz. Uh, Sirens Banger of the Week, we have um, a woman who was uh, the subject of six separate interactions with Centralia Police over the weekend. I get the press memos, and I always like to read through them just to see if there's anything big we should be focusing on for court or anything. And this thing, yeah, just unfolded all over the weekend. It started, uh, this is a 41-year-old Centralia woman. Her name's in the story. There's no real need to mention it again yeah. here, I don't think. Um, but first contacted the woman at 1.40 Saturday for a report she had flashed her breasts at juvenile children near Centralia Middle School. God, save her for the library. So she was cited for indecent exposure and issued a court summons. 4.05 p.m. the same day, 
Officers resp- responded to Schuber Road for a report um, that she was looking into vehicles and hitting vehicles. Officers confirmed there was no damage and moved her along. Do you think that was with her hands or her vehicle? Doesn't say. A couple hours later at 6.15 p.m., officers responded to, it looks like Safeway here. Uh, well, it just says 1100 block of Harrison Avenue. It could be the, the little mart across the street, too. Um, where she was trying to set up a tent. They moved her along there about 10.15, so less than two hours later, she was uh, back at the Harrison Avenue grocery store threatening employees. Um, She was trespassed from there, but not arrested due to booking restrictions, which we're still going to look to have a story on soon. And then they got another call at 5.45 a.m. that she was in the 1200 block of Harrison Avenue, stole keys to a vehicle, and drove off in the stolen vehicle. Um, An officer tried to stop her. She got on I-5 and took off to Thurston County, uh, I think Thurston County deputies also tried to stop her and couldn't. Anyways, a few hours later, 9.50 a.m. now on Sunday, there's a report that she was looking into vehicles and taking ad- items from patios. Um, they located her in the stolen vehicle, blocked her in before she could flee, and she was arrested on DUI charges. So it was just like a full 24 hours of just mayhem. Yeah. Um, wow. And eventually they arrested her on the, the DUI um, and yeah, her bail was set at fifty thousand dollars. What a what a wild ride! It was a wild ride. Well, I'm really interested in learning more about if the restrictions are just stuff that was already in place from the COVID restrictions, or if there's staffing. I know Emily's reached out to the jail and just has not heard back, and yeah. she was going to try to reach out to Sheriff Snaza and ask about there it. There was that story that I wrote a little while back about how the jail has like nine vacancies in employees, and they expect to have like eleven in no time, um, and. It was kind of the same situation. I reached out and I just never really got a response. Just sort of wrote up what From I the jail. had. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah. So I'm curious to see what she finds out also. I mean, I'm not going to say it, but there's a certain trio that oversees operations at the county that maybe could put the porn down and focus on this, but I'm not going to say it. We don't know anything. We don't know what the restrictions are for. I know Thurston County had some somewhat recently for an outbreak of COVID. They lifted and, and then like we, I think we talked about last week. Well, had to reinstitute them. Don't let not we will any, find out. Don't let not having any facts get in the way of a good public discussion. And for people who maybe have more knowledge than us and know what the restrictions are, the only reason that it's being pressed recently is the Centralia Police Department's been adding it to their their press memos and their daily news release when they can't get somebody into jail, and that's been a relatively new thing. And if you would like to talk about the situation and know anything, please reach out yeah. because we are looking for sources who will respond. Uh, People's Champion of the Week. We have two nominees. The first is Chehalis Firefighter Adam Miller, who was awarded an Exceptional Service Medal during Monday's Chehalis City Council meeting for providing aid to a motorcycle crash victim while off-duty last summer. Uh, He was with his family, and there was a motorcycle that hit a deer near Salzer Creek. Chief Adam Fulbright said of Miller, on arrival, he he promptly began trauma care, directing a retired firefighter to hold C-spine while he removed the patient's clothing and performed a rapid trauma assessment, gathering critical information and treating the patient. Very good nominee. This one, however, I feel is slightly more news dump-esque. The Centralia City Council... uh, recognized wastewater collection system technician Jason Schroeder for being honored by, or for winning the Pacific Northwest Clean Water Association's Collection System Operator of the Year Award. He's been working for the city for more than 24 years and was chosen out of 3,409 certified collection operations from throughout Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, according to Public Works Director Kim Ashmore. Wastewater Manager Rick Eaton said, I personally have seen this guy check all those boxes throughout this last year. How do you like to put it? You're number one in the number two business. Ha <laughs> ha. It's really good. I liked it. Uh, he is also, uh, Eaton is leaving to be Elma's public works director. So good for him. Oh, that's really cool. I like both of these stories. Can't, yeah. can't really decide between like an actual hero and a municipal hero, you know? It's like those are both difficult things to be. Yeah. I'm going with the wastewater guy. I really yeah. like number one and number two. Yeah. I, I th- feel like if you called him shit boy, he'd be honored. I don't know. You should try it. Yeah. I, 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 I was like, like a huge I'm like, I, reach. I, I checked like, him first. <laughs> this guy has a sense of humor. I bet Look, you if you I'm, insulted him and called him poop boy, he'd really love it. I bet if you punched him in the face, he'd say, do it again. Look, I worked at, you know, adjacent to the old wastewater treatment plant. They That's gotta, it. He's our hero of the week. He's definitely <laughs> our hero of the week, yeah. 
Um, yeah, congrats to that guy. That's a cool award. No, it's Facebook. It is. Facebook comments. Uh, on Centralia's police surveillance trailer, somebody writes, welcome to the police state. There was a lot of comments like that. Uh, on Grays Harbor's stolen excavator, Warren McLeod chimed in and said, I can dig this story. <laughs> get it? That's a good one. He knows He knows from digging things. Yeah. Before you go, we get the joke. Before mm-hmm. you go into the next section of them, just because I think I'll forget if I don't mention it before, but um, I wrote a story this week about the Lewis County Assessor's um, like property tax uh, exemption for seniors and people who are disabled. The like income uh, threshold went up, which means you can make more money and still qualify for the exemption. And all of the comments on that story were angry. And so I think I must have done a very poor job of explaining that now it's easier for people in Lewis County to get out of paying their property taxes. So I'm very sorry if I didn't do a good job with that one because everybody seemed very mad. It's generally they're just issue. angry with people not paying their property taxes. No, they were like, no, it's just all we're it's all gonna be harder for us seniors. And I was like, no, that's not that's the opposite of the point. But anyway, so sorry. I feel bad. Um I put a bunch of comments on Swope's Hunt for Porn story in here. Uh the one I I one of them, the pastor was apparently really messed up by seeing a Playboy at age twelve. Is this his roundabout way of saying he's now having Ted Bundy-like serial killer compulsions? I don't think that's true, but it was funny. Eh. I mean, with the context, I mean... I think everybody in that room got a little carried away. Yeah. Um, some of them planned it that way, and some of them just caught up in the moment. I don't know. What? A, looking back, what a weird meeting. It was a different meeting. I don't... Talking about pornography and Ted Bundy and the library? Yeah. One of those things doesn't fit. Public comment. Actually, I'm not sure which one of those doesn't <laughs> I was going to say. Public comment powered meetings were always, I'm not saying the most enjoyable, but a little bit entertaining to cover as a reporter just because you get so many different perspectives and people are amped up at different levels. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Um, just from a reporting perspective, I'm sure I mean, Rachel had fun. It had a real like Pawnee vibe for sure. I was surprised like, to see some of the people that I saw there. Yeah. Like 90% of the mostly public comment stories that I've written have been on the YMCA. And those are pretty much, you're going to hear the same feelings represented. So I've not quite had an experience like this, but the other one was also the like um, homeless camp sweeping thing that they passed in like November of last year, I think. So yeah, it, it, it definitely makes for interesting stuff and like kind of, already fills the press time question for you. Uh, I'm going to ignore the rest of the comments. Uh, what's coming in, I don't know, Saturday's paper? Do you have anything Such yet? restraint you have. I mean, <laughs> I really thought you were going to rant about this one, and you just came in here and, you know, it's totally balanced, reasonable, practical. This isn't the time to be comical. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, gosh, what is in the next edition? I know Emily's been busy on a lot of crime stuff. She'd probably rather not be writing, but... Um, I think it's important to document things that are happening. Mitchell is working on a grant that the Lewis County Drug Court House got. Right. Um, and also, I think in the next week or so, we'll have an update on the night-by-night night shelter. And um, I, like I said, was working on that um, Israel thing. I got a dog bite situation in Centralia. And then Owen has a couple like city council things. Yeah, we got a new housing on. development. And the expansion of the new tattoo shop. Or oh, not yeah. new tattoo shop, but expansion of Cosmic Tattoo in Centralia. Is that an Owen story? Yep. Yeah. I and gotcha. also the chamber debate. See if we get that one. That might be later, but we'll see. That's like, we got a lot going on right now. Toledo toe ribbon cutting in the morning oh, yeah. as well yeah. for their big broadband plan mm-hmm. around Winlock. I will be there. Yeah. All right, and with that, uh, we're going to close it out. Reminder, we're sponsored by Summit Funding and The Roof Doctor. You can leave us a review on Apple Podcast if you so desire. We'll talk to you next week. And, you know, I would just like to give all of you a personal reminder. When you get home tonight, gather your loved pornography around and just give it a tight hug. Let it know how much it means to you. What if because you were going to say best big of Lewis government is next you week. Told, is coming you for told it. us to put it all in the, in the woods. Well, I mean, That's how you go us. out to the woods <laughs> and get your pornography and hold it tight. I can honestly say that I have never owned like 
physical media that has pornography in it. You goddamn Gen Zers. Not, like nothing. <laughs> Pervert. <laughs> <laughs> I, who are you talking to? You. <laughs> uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this long-form discussion on pornography more than the one that was broadcast on Facebook Live earlier this week. That's all for this week. <laughs>